Hey guys, what up? Good evening. And um, what I'm talking about in this video is the top Python modules and libraries. Um, so I included entire frameworks in this list, and I guess that's arguable whether or not I should have done that. But uh, basically, libraries, frameworks, I, they're all the same thing uh, for this video presentation. And as I started making this, I actually realized that there was way more Python modules that are very, like, um, that are very important day-to-day -day use in Python. So um, I couldn't list all of them, and as I started adding more and more, and I'm like, oh, I kind of have to cut it somewhere, uh, you know, cut it short somewhere. So um, I didn't, this isn't like a fully inclusive list or anything like that, so disclaimer if I didn't mention something, um, I apologize, and uh, hopefully you guys can just mention it in the comments and let me know. Um, so here, I'll go ahead and get started. Uh, first one is Python request, which I think is really awesome. So the request framework was uh, actually created from a guy in Northern Virginia. I had no idea. Um, I just recently uh, connected with him on LinkedIn, which was pretty cool because, uh, like I said, I'm from Virginia, so I have no I had no idea that one of the most important Python libraries out there right now uh, was created by a guy that went to George Mason and um, is uh, right right down the street from where I live. So. With this library, what you use it for is for uh, requests for scraping. So like HTTP um, is very good for just parsing out JSON. Um, and once you really start to be able to hack the modern web when it comes to uh, viewing AJAX posts and, and requests, uh, you know, gets and posts and things like that, uh, this request library is uh, is super important. It's really re replaced the uh, the old URL, URL lib uh, module that everybody was using. Um, so now Python requests is... Uh, is definitely a library to check out. So next is uh, Scrappy. Scrappy is a web scraping framework. And Scrappy is awesome because um, it basically if you want to build something like uh, Google, and the original Google search engine was built in Python, by the way, but if you wanted to build something uh, like a Google bot that goes and just starts parsing link after link, you could create something from scratch and, uh, you know, understandably you would know how it works and everything. But Scrappy does a lot of the hard work for you as far as how a scraper and uh, a web search engine should operate. So some of the stuff will be foreign to you when you first join or first start, you know, checking into the library. But um, a lot of the stuff is, is being done uh, this particular way for a reason. Uh, the one downside to Scrappy is that it's still working on the Python 3 implementation. Last I checked a few weeks ago, it was almost completely ported, which was really cool because um, it had only supported Python 2.7 for the longest time, uh, but now it's it's up to date with the latest Python 3s. Um, so uh, probably 3.4 would be relatively safe to use in, uh, for Scrappy. Uh, but anyway, it's still a um, it was still coming along last I checked, but definitely a library worth worth checking out for Python. Next is Tornado. I actually did a uh, small presentation on Tornado, but I really think it's awesome because if you're going to build a super fast website uh, that's non-blocking, so similar to Node.js or something like that, uh, Python does have options with Tornado, um, and you can build just a super simple web server. Um, and if you wanted to create a framework like, um, you know, like Flask or something like that, then uh, Tornado would probably be a good place to start um, because even Flask uses uh, the the WorkZoog, um, if I'm pronouncing that right, um, web server. So this is, uh, Tornado is, is its own implementation similar to WorkZoog. So uh, definitely something to check out. Next one is Pillow. So any sort of image manipulation. We used to use Pill, P-I-L. Uh, yeah, it was definitely one L. Um, so Pill um, was lacking with certain features like transparent images and uh, resizing and aspect ratios and a lot of things that r r really uh, are that get complicated when it comes to image manipulation uh, but pillow has solved all of our problems when it comes to that so um, I've used pillow extensively when I was actually downloading images resizing them and keeping their aspect ratios and things like that so uh, pillow is definitely the best image manipulation library out there for Python as far as I know Next one is SQL Alchemy. So that is a uh, object relational mapper, which is essentially Python code that queries databases. So it's almost like stored procedures, basically, where your Python code is written in a certain way, where it ends up, it ends up uh, you know, querying a database in um, basically the most uh, efficient way possible. So you don't have to worry about writing complicated SQL commands. You could just write and learn how to do it in the Python SQL Alchemy way and it will handle a lot of complicated issues for you. This is very similar to something like um, Django's object relational mapper, 
Django has their own, um, but SQL Alchemy is the same way. Like in Django, when you write your models and you query your database and things like that, um, you're doing it in a Django object relational mapper way. Same thing with SQL Alchemy. Uh, but SQL Alchemy is very popular. Websites like Yelp use it and uh, a bunch of other ones. So definitely one of the more popular Python packages. In fact, I've actually heard of people that in, uh, use Python for their websites just to use SQL Alchemy. So definitely a popular option. Next one's Beautiful Soup. Beautiful Soup goes back a long, long way. Uh, but Beautiful Soup is a uh, HTML parsing and XML parsing library. So if you're trying to do some data scraping, uh, Beautiful Soup is definitely an option for you. In the past, um, one of the complaints has been that it's slow, but unfortunately there's a tre tremendous amount of effort that's gone into this project. And um, it's not easy um, to solve all of your web scraping problems. Um, but Beautiful Soup aims, you know, it does a, as good a job as, as any out there when it comes to that. Um, so definitely check out Beautiful Soup. They've definitely made uh, improvements along the way and it's good for data scraping. Now the problem with data scraping nowadays is that it's all AJAX requests and JSON and stuff like that so the data exists inside the browser and in many cases Beautiful Soup isn't going to help you there because it's just parsing HTML source. Um, but that's where Python requests comes in, the first module that I mentioned here because when you start analyzing what requests are being made you can start duplicating those requests and, um, and you know obtaining that JSON data from the server instead of having to have the browser do it for you. So there's always ways, uh, if a browser is, is rendering data that doesn't exist in source, it's coming from somewhere, and ultimately you can analyze that and use a library like Beautiful, uh, or I'm sorry, uh, Python requests to be able to get around that. Now, if you're, if you're just doing traditional websites where the data exists in source, you might as well use something like Beautiful Soup because it'll make it really easy for you. The next one's Python Selenium. So when it comes to database automation and scraping, um, you can't get any better than Selenium. The problem with Selenium is it's slow. The positive, though, is that um, you can automate so many tasks using the Python and Selenium. And, and in many cases, if you're not trying to build the next Google search engine, it, it's pretty much all you need to be able to uh, parse the, the web and, and just get all the data that you could possibly need. So um, Selenium is very good. Python Selenium is, is um, you know, it comes in other flavors, so this isn't just necessarily a Python implementation, but uh, Selenium works with Python. It works with C Sharp and Java. And, um, it, is, it is certainly a popular tool. It's used everywhere, but Python um, is very easy to work with when it comes to Selenium. Next one is PyQt. So if you're going to be doing any sort of GUI-based um, uh, graphical user interface is what GUI stands for, but uh, GUI development is um, is obviously a popular option with Python because things are portable. You can write in Python, and, and your executable will run on oh, my, uh, Mac or uh, Linux or Windows. So a lot of people do use Python for GUI-based development. I've never been big into GUI. I've been more on the web side of things, but um, PyQt is definitely one of the more popular GUI-based applications or library frameworks out there for writing that type of software in Python. <clears throat> The next one is an honorable mention uh, for the most part is Kivi. I've had, uh, or Kivi is the way it's pronounced, um, I've had some issues with trying to get Kivi to work. Uh, I'm sure that they've made some advancements along the way, but ultimately what Kivi is trying to do is the same thing as like probably what uh, Xamarin was trying to do with C Sharp, where essentially you can write code in one language and it compiles and, and basically uh, makes it much easier to port. Uh, say you're writing for Android, you can. Uh, it, it makes it much easier to write it in a Python-specific way, where it works on Android, and then you just have to make a few tank tankers um, to get it to work with iOS or something like that. So that's ultimately how those things work. But unfortunately, they never work as easy as uh, as they advertise, and that's just because things are relatively new. Uh, Kiwi is an open-source project, but even companies that were, you know, billion-dollar companies like uh, Xamarin, which just recently got bought by Microsoft, still struggle with building a, um, a basically having one language transpile into all these different operating systems like uh, iOS and Android. So for that reason, you know, we've seen things like React Native that have come along to try to solve that prob problem. Kiwi is uh, Python's attempt to solve that problem. Last time I checked, it needed some work still, but uh, definitely a cool project out there to follow. Hopefully it's going strong. I haven't checked on it recently. Next one is Flask. So now we're getting into the web framework territory. 
Python Flask is a uh, micro framework, so it's not um, trying to do everything for you when it comes to website development. Uh, but it is a very popular option for getting a website off the ground quickly. Um, and if you're not trying to build a, like a game game changing web application that needs to handle all kinds of authentication, it can basically handle all of that stuff. But ultimately, you end up having to write a lot of what other larger frameworks are doing for you in Flask. Um, so uh, although it does solve, um, you know, the same problems that a larger framework does and, um, you know, the, the fact of the matter is that you still have to implement stuff that, you know, you wouldn't have to implement in a larger framework. So there's, pl there's pros and uh, or pluses and minuses for all of these types of frameworks. Flask is a micro framework. If I was going to do a simple blog, I'd probably do it in Flask. If I was going to do a more robust web application, uh, I'm going to do it in Django. So Django is uh, definitely the de facto web framework out there for Python. There's many of frameworks I could mention, Web2Pi, WebPy, a bunch of other ones, Cherry Pie, uh, Pyramid. But the fact of the matter is uh, when it comes to web development in Python, Django is the, the big uh, front runner there. It's like Rails for um, Ruby on Rails for the Ruby language. Um, Django is Python's Ruby on Rails, or what Ruby on Rails is to Ruby, Django is to Python. So anyway, guys, definitely if you're going to be doing some web framework development, uh, do Django. If you're going to try to get a corporate job in Python web development, in many cases it's going to be a Django job. And Django is still going strong after all these years. Um, in fact, it's probably more popular now than it's ever been. The next one is for uh, bioinformatics, data crunching, number crunching, um, so you're going to look at uh, libraries like SciPy, and unfortunately I'm not really into that kind of stuff, so I can't really comment too much on the ins and outs of it, but um, certainly a popular language when it comes to that type of thing, um, as well as NumPy, so um, that's another scientific computing library. And then the last one I was going to mention is Anaconda, which is a relatively new Python framework out there, and really what it's doing is it's um, it's creating... Uh, is making it easier to manage all these different scientific computing packages that are out there, uh, which Python is very, very important in that industry. A lot of people are coming out of college or they're you know, doing machine learning. These data scientists are using these different Python um, algorithm libraries and um, data plotting libraries and things like that. Well, Anaconda is kind of the unifying force to try to bring all that stuff together. So it's an uh, honorable mention as like more of a new library uh, that has come along and is uh, extremely helpful. So that is really it for the end of the list. I didn't want to continue to add more and more, but I, I really feel like I could. Um, there are plenty of other libraries out there that we all run into. Um, so much hard work is poured into the Python community when it comes to, um, you know, really the fact that all of this stuff is brought to us by guys and girls that are just donating their time and their efforts and their brains, and, and they've created a truly tremendous language that has a tremendous amount of community support. So it's awesome to be a Python developer, I think. And, uh, and that, like I said, is coming from a guy that typically does C-sharp development and JavaScript development. So um, I like to be well-rounded in all of these things. And Anyway, guys, uh, so if you're thinking about using Python, uh, definitely check it out. Python 3.4 would be my recommendation at this point, And try to use it with any one of these libraries to just start tackling different things that Python can do. Um, one of the other mentions is... Um, there is a Pi game framework, so if you're interested in doing games like simple games, Pi game might be a, an option for you. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Have a good day. Please subscribe. Bye.